Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. It's such a weird and interesting time to be in crypto and be a holder of XRP. Don't you think? Look, we're all excited for a positive ruling for XRP holders in the SECB Ripple case. And, um, it, and I think most of us out there believe that's likely to rocket the price of XRP. And it's exciting because that decision is perhaps imminent. However, it's weird, too, it's a, because look, it's a weird and uncertain time to be in crypto, like, just in general, because there's an, an ever-increasing number of signs that the legacy banking system continues to crumble and fall apart. So what will that mean for the price of XRP and crypto in general? Well, I want to talk about that. Uh, in fact, here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. XRP trading in this range for a year is breakout coming, and that's close to where we'll be starting. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. At the time that I'm recording this video, XRP is just shy of 47 cents. Bitcoin's a... Uh, $29,650, market cap at $1.28 trillion for the entire asset class, and Bitcoin dominance at 46.35%. So, you know, really for, for most of the week, at least the last several days, we've, we haven't seen a trend to the upside in general for crypto, certainly for Bitcoin, which leaves the market. And you have the Crypto Fear and Greed Index at 61 out of 100, so market participants are experiencing greed. Um, but, uh, what about XRP specifically? You know, I haven't highlighted this in a while, but I wanted to bring this up. Um, you know, in terms of the number of new XRP accounts being created, uh, it's, it's gotten back down to levels that were just kind of normal before XRP started pumping within the last couple months. And so you can see, um, you know, if you look back, so what I have on your screen, by the way, I should say that first, uh, it's the number of new account, uh, accounts activated, uh, just XRP, uh, dating back to January 1st of this year. Now, there was a, a bit of a frenzy, you know, in crypto in general, and that did bleed over to, to XRP, which is great to see. So if you look at, if you're talking about the beginning part of January, yeah, there were some days where you see like right here, January 2nd, over 2,000 new accounts created. The next day, closer to 1,600 than the 1,700 in a day, over 1,800 in a day. So it was at an elevated level because of that frenzy. Once that started to feel a little bit more normal, there's a little bit less activity in those regards for XRP. And it ended up getting to a point by, you know, call it roughly the, you know, beginning part of February, where it was more normal to see maybe like 1,000 to 1,200 new accounts per day. And that's about where we are right now. And you can see in between, yeah, there was massive spike, which uh, peaked at, uh, let's see, March 29th at 3,383 brand new accounts. And of course, this is just mirroring the incredible positive price action. So it's just, and this is normal. Historically, this is absolutely normal. Whenever you see a massive increase in price in short order, which I think it's fair to state that we saw. I mean, you're talking about the low 30 something cent region up to almost 60 cents. Well, it, it, when that type of stuff happens, you see a, a massive jump in adoption of XRP, certainly at least in terms of new account creation. And it's tapered off a bit since then. It looks like it's finding a floor back to where it was. Again, in that basically call it, you know, whatever, 1,000 to 1,200 new accounts per day. But it's not going to stay there forever. And we know that. So fine. XRP has been trading sideways for a hot minute. But it ain't going to stay like that. So again, here's the headline from the Crypto Basic. XRP trading in this range for a year is breakout coming. Well, again, can't stay there forever. So either it's going to go to zero and collapse and then we just be sad pandas forever. Or at some point in the future, unknown time uh, in terms of uh, what, the, uh, what the time frame might be for it, as far as I'm concerned anyway. But either it goes to zero or it's going to go to a new all-time high. And so the way that I've always looked at it, and I've, I've articulated this a number of times, so I'll just be brief on this, but just to make the broader point since we're talking about timeframes, one of those things is going to happen. So for me investing in XRP, it's a binary bet exactly for that reason. It's not going to hang around here forever. Yes, it's volatile in terms of percentage moves relative to equities. I got that. But none of it actually matters because all of the price action we've been seeing for even the last half a decade is not an indication of whether or not XRP would go to zero or hit a new all-time high. It's just people, it's volatile, there's a frenzy around it, that, 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 like, that's it in a general sense. So I'm waiting for one of those things to happen. And you know where I place my bet, obviously, is that we ain't going to zero. We're going to hit a new all-time high. That's my, that, that's my bet. Nobody knows for sure it's risky investing in XRP or anything, but that's what I firmly believe is most probable. So for me, it's a very long time frame, and I, that's why I have to be Mr. Patient. Now, it's also true, if you want to look at what's being covered in this article, even if you just look over the past year, 
it has been range bound. And so it's just so interesting to see people getting excited as, uh, you know, price goes up and there's news articles written and new people jumping in XRP. There's also people exiting XRP as it goes down because people are freaking out. And it's just so comical to me to look at this and be like, <laughs> none of it freaking matters. Like, n none of it freaking matters. matters. And that's why I, I joke that, you know, the people that make this possible, you know, the emotional buyers and sellers, they're useful idiots. And I'm thankful for them because they're the people that cause volatility, if not for them. If it, they're a world where there's nothing but moon family sedans out there, there would be no buying or selling because we'd all be stubborn little idiots. <laughs> you know, like I just be sitting there, uh, nope, not budging, not budging. Uh, so thankful there are people that will do this because this is what causes volatility, which is the purpose of investing in the first place. Anyway, Peace reads as follows. XRP has been caught in an extensive range since the crash induced by the Terra collapse in May 2022. The asset has continued to trade between a low of 28 cents and a high of 55 cents for uh, for one year, facing fierce resistance against uh, each time it seeks to break out from the region. And so if you think about it, like this isn't something you see so much in stocks, not in terms of the level of volatility, but you know, you're talking about from roughly that region down to, oh, actually, let me correct this too. So they're right on the bottom end, about 28 cents. But uh, here is a one-year chart for XRP just on Live Coinwatch. You can see literally one year ago, XRP was actually 61 cents, so that's not quite right. But e either way, the, the range is pretty close. And so that level of volatility, you're talking about from 61 cents going down over 50% in price and then back up over 100% or, or, or somewhere there about anyway, close to 100% from that level. Uh, no, actually, yeah, it was technically a little over 100% up from the low of 28 cents. And so to see that level of volatility, that would freak out, you know, anybody that's new to crypto. If you're not, if you don't know, that's the norm. But I still look at this and I'm just kind of still like, hmm. no, I'm interested in following it because I have skin in the game. That's what makes it fun and interesting. But still, does it functionally matter? Hmm. No, <laughs> not, not over the long haul, because either like one or two things is going to happen. Either XRP goes to zero or it's going to hit a new all time high. Everything in between in the end won't matter. But, but the point's still not lost to me. Like, we are at this point where something's going to happen, and in particular, with us understanding that perhaps it perhaps is imminent, that we're going to have a ruling in the SEC v. Ripple case. If it's positive, as, as I think many of us think it, it will be, at least for XRP holders, even if Ripple technically loses or has to pay a fine. Well, most of us, for good reason, I think, suspect that that would mean XRP price absolutely rockets. I think we're going to have a very interesting remainder of 2023. I firmly believe that. Now, in terms of what's happening with the banking stuff, well, let me just share this. And I've been talking about it a fair bit over the last few days in select videos, but are you guys familiar with this uh, this guy? What's his name? Blaji Srinivasan? Srinivasan? Nailed it. You know what? I, I don't want to keep trying to say that name for the rest of the video. For the rest of the video, Blaji Srinivasan is, is going to be called John. I'm just going to call him John. But this guy... He bet that in within 90 days, and he made the place his bet in March. 90 days, uh, Bitcoin would go to a million, and he has given up already. So what he's articulating, though, is interesting. He says that he did it, he made this bet to make a point, but that's a costly bet. So let me get into the specifics here. Uh, so the, uh, the headline from the Daily Hoddle is, John pays out $1.5 million to close Bitcoin bet, says he raised public alarm since no one else will. Uh, folks, I wouldn't say nobody else will. I mean, I've been talking about this topic, and not that I agree with everything that John has to say on this, but I I've been talking about it. In fact, most of us have been talking about this. Piece reads as follows. Former Coinbase Chief Technology Officer John has paid out $1.5 million to close out his long-shot bet on Bitcoin's price. In March, John made waves in the crypto world after placing a million-dollar bet that Bitcoin would skyrocket to $1 million in just 90 days in response to failing banks and hyperinflation. Bitcoin... No, let me just, i, I got to pause there and say one thing. Look, the idea of that happening, it's not that it's impossible. People frequently in life feel that any X, X number of things are impossible just purely because they haven't... You know, it hasn't happened before, and people just assume that the status quo is just going to persist. Now, I'm not uh, the doomsday type either. I'd like to live in reality. But, you know, the idea of something catastrophic happening, you know, with the dollar specifically because it's being debased consistently by the Fed, like, that is not a wacky idea. It's just more of like, when? The timeline, that's the part that I don't know. And I, I, I don't find it likely that we're going to see a turnaround because, you know, the, the ruling class, 
I don't care what your politics are, whether you're on the left or the right. It, it's, it doesn't matter. Both parties in the United States here have been contributing to the outrageous spending that's been occurring here. So, and that's just one factor in all this, but it's a crucial factor. And I don't, I have no confidence that that's going to be turned around. So it's at what point does the day of reckoning come? For me, that's more what it's like. Is it going to happen in my lifetime or not? I don't know for sure, but this will not end well. Any nation that has ever treated their currency in such a way, it just, it falls, it, the, the fiat currency ceases to exist ultimately. That is, that is what history tells us. We are living through that again here, which is why the advent of crypto is so fundamentally changing. Uh, like for the globe, it, it really truly is. That it's, it's one of those rare technologies that comes along. And that's why I'm so appreciative of, of Bitcoin, despite the fact that it's not technologically advanced, you know, relative to other cryptos now. But that's why I'm so appreciative of it, because that was the inflection point where people are like, wait a minute. So you can have a system that doesn't require trust. I mean, other than, you know, you trust that cryptography works, you trust that the code is what it is, but it's all open source. You can just read it and make sure that it works. That's the astonishing part. Anyway, peace continues. Bitcoin was trading around $27,000 at the time of his bet, and is only trading at $28,614 at the time of writing. Now the former Coinbase CTO says in a new video, he's closed out the wager early and claims he just made the bet just to raise public alarm about the U.S. Federal Reserve's monetary policies. Quote, I burned a million to tell you they're printing trillions. First, I'm going to talk about the million, then the trillions. So remember, remember that million, that million dollar bet from a few weeks ago? I just settled it up front. I settled it early. $500,000 to Bitcoin Core, $500,000 uh, give directly, $500,000 to Medlock. You can check those links on chain. You can read details at John slash fee. I'm not going to read. It's got his last name in a URL. I ain't doing it. <laughs> You're John. You are John for the remainder of this article. Damn it, because it's my channel and I do what I want. There are just some legal details to work out, but that is now done. That's provable. You can go check it. So that takes care of the million. That's proof of work. And now let's talk about the trillions. So the reason that I did this is I wanted to tell you in a provable way to send a provable signal that there is something wrong in the economy. I'm not in the habit of just burning a million bucks for the sake of it. There's something wrong in the economy, and the state isn't telling you about it, and things could unwind very fast, end quote. Yeah, and so this idea of this, um, and he is correct in that, right? it's the, the general sentiment I agree with anyway, that's ridiculous that he burnt seven figures to make a point. I'll just take him as a word on that. He even paid it out early. Okay, cool. But, uh, man, it, in terms of the banking crisis, I, I have trouble believing that it's actually over to this point, and the primary reason is, Jim Cramer said that he thinks it's probably over at this point. So he, whatever he says is wrong. But uh, but no, it's, it's you can see as, as stocks were tanking for regional banks throughout this week. And it's, you know, I, I saw news reports that a lot of these regional banks had uh, investment strategies effectively similar to the banks that ended up collapsing. And so I'm like, yeah, okay, contagion spread, basically. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But at what point does this fall apart? Because, look, as, as I said before, too, I, I do believe that when it comes down to it, if, if it's ab if the final possibility to, to stop the economy from going off a cliff and the banking system from going off a cliff would be uh, printing uh, dollars to take care of all of the people that had money in any bank that fails, well, the Fed would just do that. Understanding, of course, they may have to change rules depending on the specifics of the situation, but they would do that because otherwise you don't have a country. They would absolutely do that, and that would result in ultimately in massive inflation. Because you're talking about increasing the Fed's balance sheet, and so it's just, and at the same time they're you know, in, you know the Fed's been hiking this did this week you know hike the rates you know 25 basis points to try and tamp down inflation. It's like they're spe they're acting out of both sides of their mouth if that were a thing. It's ridiculous. How the hell are these people in charge of anything? Like I, I don't know how they dress themselves. I kid you not. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.